And what happened? Thanks, David. Uh, so it's been a really weird 2022. Mm. Uh, thankfully, 2023 has started a little bit stronger. We can okay. get into that a little bit later. Mm. Uh, but I think, you know, one, one thing is the second half impact of uh, COVID last year was a lot bigger than people had expected. Obviously, in the first half, we had Shanghai shut down for over two months. Uh, mm. And in the second half, people said, oh, there's no shutdown, at least not to the scale of Shanghai. Uh, maybe it'll be better. But in fact, the second half impact was huge. We had shutdowns all across all of our malls, except for in uh, Kunming. And so there there were shutdowns, you know, totally unexpectedly uh, as well. So uh, we lost probably uh, 100 trading weeks uh, in total in wow. terms of all our malls. So we have 10 malls, mm -hmm. uh, so about uh, 10 weeks per mall in the second half alone. So uh, these were not complete shutdowns, but, you know, either F&B was closed, cinemas were closed, uh, shops couldn't open because the shopkeepers had COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, of course, our staff were also heavily affected. So I think it was a tougher second half than most people expected. Yeah, not the most ideal conditions, one would say. What did January look like to you? So what are you seeing as far as foot traffic? Because we want to push the story forward right now. Yeah. So let's start with the mainland. So January has been actually pretty strong. Uh, we're very keen to f watch how February shapes up mm. uh, because the, the Chinese New Year, the shift uh, this year was January 20th. Uh, okay. Last year was 30th. So mm. there will be a little bit of shifting. Uh, but January has been very strong. I think actually it'll probably be, be our best January to date uh, on record. So January is looking very strong foot traffic is up um, you know foot traffic last year was pretty paltry uh, because of all the restrictions and, and because of the infections but this year so far they've been up as have sales okay and th does that also apply to Hong Kong in terms of foot traffic and have we seen of course a lot more mainland tourists come to Hong Kong in January what did you see so Hong Kong feels to have really bottomed out now. Half on half, we were up uh, for the first time in five years. Uh, and so this is probably looking up to be uh, the best year for Hong Kong for us in, in several years' time. Uh, mainland Chinese tourists definitely are coming back, uh, maybe not quite in the numbers that everybody is hoping for. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. we definitely hear more, mainland, uh, more Mandarin in the shops and the restaurants uh, in our malls. When do you expect to see the market start to reflect that as far as commercial rents are concerned, for example? And I think this is the measure of the government but basically nine-year lows yeah. on this one. So when does it start to pick up, you think? So I, I'm hopeful that it'll start picking up this year. Um, obviously, we have to see how things go. Uh, there will probably not be too many major moves before the meetings in March uh, in mainland China. And so everyone's really looking at Q2 for, for the, the accelerated pickup. Okay, and back to the mainland as far as leases and, and, and just the general trend of rents, for example, commercial rents. Right. Where do you expect that to go this year? Uh, I, I'm actually hopeful uh, in the mainland as well. I think that uh, with the j strong January, mm. uh, with travel coming back, uh, with people feeling a lot more open and, and a lot more free in the mainland, uh, that should help our business as well. What about residential there too? Um, so residential, yeah. residential still been choppy. Uh, That's I think tricky. there's there's still a lot of question marks about wit, uh, what will happen in the residential market. Okay. Uh, that being said, uh, I think that we're placed. Uh, we have a small residential portfolio, uh, service apartments to be specific. Mm. Um, but I think that uh, we will do better this year than we did last year. That's in Wuhan, Wuxi, and Kunming. That's correct. That, so I'm curious then, what is that price point looking like? At this point in time, that whole that that's that, that luxury segment, if you will. I, I think compared to uh, you know a year ago today, uh, mm. price prices are probably down a touch. Um, I, I think one of the issues, obviously, is demand, mm. uh, and there's the doubts of uh, whether or not many developers will be able to hand over the properties. Uh, but I think uh, with our specific portfolio and with our financial uh, backing, we'll, we'll be fine. Home prices in Hong Kong. Mm. What, 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 what's the outlook? And I mean, that, that question is also colored by the fact that onshore, mainland, the home price market is not doing very well. And you have suddenly the border opening up. So wh where do you see the sort of dynamic going to? So I think in Hong Kong, uh, a lot of people, a lot of mainland Chinese buyers were a little bit wary over the past couple of years. Mm. Uh, this year especially, uh, and, and mm. after the Shanghai lockdown, I think mainland buyers are looking at Hong Kong a lot more favorably. Mm. Uh, and I think that home prices in Hong Kong uh, should have room to increase. I am of the view that we're probably past the worst. Uh, and that it, sh it should look up from here. I don't suppose you can give me a revenue target this year in terms of revenue growth? Uh, that's, that's always tough, but let's just say that I have given my team a really high target, and I think that we will do well. Better than last year, at least, hopefully? Uh, better than last year. 